Hello guys, and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you the new uh, Pyro Pyro uh, simulation in Cinema 4D. And yeah, let's get started. It's really important that you have the 2023 version, but it's also important that it's the 0.1 version. Uh, so I used the Cinema 4D 2023 version with the point 0.1.0. Point it's really important that you have this version. Already version below don't support this uh, yeah, new power system. So if you have the 2023 version with, uh, I don't know, a 0 0.5 or something like this, uh, you don't have this uh, new feature. That's the problem that I had and uh, yeah, I need to figure that out uh, before I started with this new pyro stuff. And yep, yeah. with the pyro tool you can uh, do a right click on your object or anything else that you, I don't know, you can use a cube or a plane or something. And um, you do a white right click and go for simulation tags and then you go for pyro. And if you press play, you can see something is happening here. So this is the simulation preview. Sometimes it takes a little bit from pressing the play button and uh, actually have the simulation done. But I think for Cinema 4D it uh, looks really really good and you don't need a plugin like uh, Turbulence FD or something to do something like this. Uh, in yeah, lower versions you need to uh, search for plugin or go for other softwares where you can do something like this. I really really like it and um, yeah I go a little bit uh, deeper into it um, as example if you go to edit in here oh wait oh, my face kind of on the top here and you go to project settings you have in simulations also the pyro thing in here where you can change some simulation uh, simulation stuff that you also can edit in here I think it's almost the same you could also go from the mode here into uh, project and I think it should be the same uh, in this tab like in this one uh, so this is your settings tab uh, but a thing that you can't uh, change is on simulation or scene yeah it's seen uh, the gravity so you could go for something like gravity zero and as you can see nothing is moving and this is the standard gravity on earth if you're believing the earth is, <laughs> is around and you could also i don't know go for a negative value of gravity and now it's, it goes down and i think wait we can play a little bit with it if you go to a plane as example and you go for i think a collider attack should work and you simulate that. As you can see, you have now a collider of the um, of the pyro stuff. So I don't know if you want to make some fog that comes from the top and goes to the bottom. You can do somewhere like this. I think that's really nice if you want to do something like uh, bottom fog. Um, as example go for something like this make it invisible okay <laughs> it's not working that well but you, you can play with it you know it's just like uh, you have a plugin, plugin or something and you want to do something nice with it and uh, yeah you don't need to go to other programs or something I don't know it's like like blender you can do everything in blender but uh, yeah nothing uh, <laughs> that that's uh, specific good I, I mean you could also use Houdini and do something in Houdini like this and it will really uh, look a little bit better but you know if you do something quick and uh, yeah pyro related you could also do it in cinema for you know maybe uh, in one time we get something like a, a water simulation thing but yeah I did something like, uh, you know, a uh, bottom fog thing before I started the tutorial and I cached it a little bit. So, I don't know, you could play something like your 
product in front and you can use this as a background fog and as you can see I also used something like uh, uh, in this um, modifiers I don't know what the name is of that I forces forces is the name of, the, of this okay so um, maybe you are a little bit uh, familiar with uh, stuff like uh, animations or glove animations or something like this or soft body dynamics um, if <laughs> if that is right you know that forces but um, if you don't know that I can show you that a little bit um, if you go to your pyro uh, object that is linked to your source um, you can go for pyro and you can go for the uh, uh, forces in, in, on the bottom here and as, a, as example you can go for something like wind um, and you need to drag and drop the wind in here um, yeah I think sometimes you need to play with the excluded or included but yeah now you can go for something like a wind speed of 500 and you will see a quick change uh, maybe not because the wind is not moving in the right direction so now that should work perfect uh, included ah included is the right one so as you can see you have a uh, wind that is coming from here to here and uh, yeah you can control it with this sliders in here it's really 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 nice and I really like it so yeah it works with uh, standard cinema 4D stuff and another thing that you can um, yeah control is the voxel size that is the resolution of your uh, simulation I don't want to increase that that much if you make a animation or something and you want to render this out um, by the way I want to do a tutorial for Octane to render something like this out I think I will upload this uh, a few days after this video comes out so maybe check it out if you want to see how to render this in Octane but yeah if you want to render this you should go for something like 1 or 0 0.5 but yeah for this preview stuff you shouldn't go that high and uh, yeah you should change it after you do that and here is the object uh, uh, voxel size you should also change this one as well if you want to render this out yeah uh, then you have the tree forces I don't know that exactly what it is but I think it's something like a, like a resolution thing I don't know it's 16 or uh, 32 for resolution I don't know this is the extra forces uh, you also have a turbulence in here I don't know you can go for something like 200 to see what it does I think it just yeah <laughs> I, I it just creates a turbulence for the for the fog you could go for something like 20 I don't know the then that uh, is a little bit higher if you have more I don't know uh, wind or anything that let this burn a little bit faster or harder I don't know how to explain it but yeah you can play with with this one it's actually like something like a noise that uh, is used in here uh, the general is the density months bound bound boundary bar, bar, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to spell this correctly but yeah as you can see it changes a little bit. I don't know what it is exactly. Velocity strength is, I think, the the speed of the whole animation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That <laughs> goes crazy. Yeah. Or the speed of the... I, I don't know if the word that I can't uh, spell correctly. Yeah. As you can see, if you go for something like one, it is much smoother um, if we talk about smoothness <laughs> I can make a smooth transition to this topic if you go to the smooth factor in here you can smooth a little bit your voxels so it's not that uh, your simulation is not more detailed but if you have a lower voxel size and you don't want to use a higher voxel size to render something you can go for this kind of thing to smooth out your voxels a little bit at uh, yeah, your whole simulation is, in, uh, simulation is not looking like uh, I don't know a pixely Minecraft thing. As you can see, you have these pixels in here. If I 
set this to zero. Maybe I can show it, but I think people that are a little bit familiar with uh, this kind of simulations know what I mean. But yeah, you can you can smooth out your whole simulation a little bit. It's just for I don't know, just uh, smoothing the the voxels to yeah have a little bit less detail, but it's not looking that that pixely. I don't know. Sometimes your, I don't know, your your VDB looks like Minecraft because you have these little cubes that are so so hard. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think I make this point clear, and I can turn, uh, I can, uh, go on with some other settings, density threshold. Uh, you could also wait, maybe maybe go to the top a little bit here. Fire burning rate. If you go to zero, you have no more uh, that much burning. Or it's more, I don't know. Maybe it uh, maybe it works opposite. If we set this to 100 fuel burning rate. Ah. Okay, it uh, increases or decreases the the burning rate of the of the whole uh, animation. Yeah. Um. Wait, um, you could also go for fuel in the tag here, uh, or temperature. If you disenable the temperature in here, you would just have something like fog. So this is also nice to yeah render something like fog. And if you go to fuel, you also render something that is called fuel. I don't know how to explain it, but fuel is something like the bright looking fog thing that you have in your fire simulations you can uh, you could turn it on or turn it off and this is yeah doing something like this yeah as you can see now you don't have this yeah hot clouds and just like uh, fire with a little bit of fog i i think i make it clear yeah so yeah velocity is also the speed noise is like uh, how the pattern is working and how fast and strength and scale and frequency it's just like a noise pattern that you have on your on your object this is like the settings for the emitter so what kind of simulation uh, or what kind of <laughs> yeah of a fire simulation is emitted on your object and this is like uh, the settings of the whole uh, fire simulation yeah okay especially as you can see you can control many 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 things I don't want to go so deep in it. I just change a little bit of values and show you what it does. So if you go for 100, you only have this fire and it looks weird and not that much real. And if you set it to one, yeah, it's it's less. So yeah, standard is seven. Temperature. Yeah, that's that is for a for the fire thing. Temperature is 100, so it works on the opposite. If you go to something like one, one, it's completely. Bright, and if you go for something like 50, you have a way more of this uh, foggy, not hot <laughs> uh, fire simulation. I, I think I make it clear. So, and you can also control something like the velocity and everything in here. It's moving, I already told it. Uh, yeah, if you could set this up, you could also see what this is doing. Oh, wait. Perfect. I think that makes this kind of thing a little bit higher. Um, advanced settings. Uh, yeah, you could also go for 32 bits to yeah get a more deeper uh, simulation. Um, I don't know. This is the solver. You could uh, use a different solver. That used uh, yeah makes different results and uh, use different techniques that's faster or lower in performance. You just need to to play with that and take a look what is working the best for you. Draw bounding box. Ah, th this is for the bounding box here. Draw pyro. So this is something like the viewport, the multiplier. So yeah, density multiplier and brightness multiplier that, that's just for the viewport stuff you could go for the density you could 
go for the temperature, fuel, velocity. If you use something like, uh, you know, um, Houdini, you know this kind of passes that you can use to to visualize how your specific uh, simulation looks like or the specific part of the simulation. That's uh, something like this works. And uh, forces, I already told you, is the simulation forces that you can use in here. So on the sim simulation forces, you can go for this type of things. And uh, yeah, could also use a gravity if you don't have one. Uh, or disenable that and yeah this makes oh that's the preference preferences that's not right uh, project we go for zero in here oh I, I I think I forgot it you could also switch from CPU and GPU that is the device that is used to simulate your stuff I I would say it's the best thing to use the GPU because um, yeah, GPU calculations are much faster than everything else. So in, in my opinion, that's uh, what I expected. You could also use the CPU one if your GPU is, I don't know, way too bad. But yeah, here you can switch it. I think I forgot it. So if you turn off the gravity and you go to... Um, hello? Hello, hello, object, pyro, and the gravity is on here, so you should keep have gravity with this type of thing. I don't know, maybe that is useless and you could just could use it in the objects or in the project, but maybe you have something that shouldn't have gravity and you need to have gravity in here, you can use it all, uh, also in the, in the uh, forces in here. Yeah, you could also use fields. That's that's really nice. I think you could use something like vertex maps and everything. It's it's really nice. It's really nice. I like the new pyro system integrated in Cinema 4D. And yeah, I think that's it for the video. It's a little bit longer than I thought, but I just want to show you the new feature in uh, the Cinema 4D uh, 20, 23.1 version. And uh, why you should update to this version. Uh, yeah, if you already have the 2023 version uh, with the point zero or something, you definitely should upgrade to the new version and uh, use this nice little feature that you have in here. I really, really like it. And yeah, I hope you like this video. I hope you like this video. Maybe you should subscribe to my channel. I make some videos about Cinema 4D and everything. I have a Cinema 4D basic uh, yeah, tutorial series on my channel where I go di uh, deep into every specific thing in Cinema 4D and how you can learn it and how it works and yeah maybe you watch this video or yeah check out my <laughs> other tutorials about pyro simulations in Emergen or my daily renders on Instagram and uh, yeah I hope you like this video goodbye